Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, is very much worried as he discusses with cub reporter Jimmy Olsen his inability to find the boot, the evil international conspirator who forced the midget Freddy to reveal an important secret. Gee whiz, Mr. Kent. I sure hope the boot's plane falls into the ocean or, or he gets lost or something. Well, even that won't help, Jim. Huh? Why not, Mr. Kent? Because according to Freddy's story, Sir Hubert set in motion a device which, unless it stopped before February 1st, will cause a great worldwide disaster to occur. Leaping lizards. And today is January 28th. Right. Only four more days. And then either disaster strikes or the boot takes over. One thing is as terrible as the other. What do you do with your spare time, gang? Read books, comic magazines, go to the movies, listen to the radio, play games? Or maybe a little of each, huh? Well, that's all good stuff. It's lots of fun, and you're entitled to some fun after a day's work in school. But look, do you think maybe you could spare a little of that time to do something really useful, something that would bring a little happiness, perhaps a good deal of cheer to people who have little? What I'm really leading up to is this. In every city and town, including your own, there are agencies devoted to the collection of food and clothing to be sent overseas for distribution to the thousands and thousands of unfortunate displaced persons in occupied areas. These people without a country, without homes, without opportunities to make a living, need help from more fortunate people such as we are. They need food. They need warm clothes. So if you really want to do something generous and useful, give up some of your playtime to canvas the homes in your neighborhood. Collect canned foods and clothing. Turn them in then to any one of a number of agencies who will gladly accept them. That's the friendly, neighborly thing to do. And now, the adventures of Superman. Hoping to perpetuate world peace, a famous nuclear scientist named Sir Hubert Clay supposedly succeeded in harnessing the tremendous atomic power of the sun. Then, realizing he was about to die, he hypnotized his midget companion, Freddy, confided his discovery to him, and instructed the tiny man to seek out a former assistant named Robert Archer. Freddy, however, was captured by an international conspirator known only as The Boot, who hired an unscrupulous hypnotist to pose as Robert Archer, hypnotized the midget, and in that way learned Sir Hubert's great secret. Ordering his henchmen to get rid of Freddy, The Boot left in a private plane for a hidden destination. However, Superman, who was searching for Freddy, arrived in time to save the midget's life and carried him to a hospital where the tiny man now lies seriously ill. In a small lounge of the hospital, the real Robert Archer, exhausted by anxious waiting, dozes fitfully on a couch. In his guise of Clark Kent, Superman is pacing the floor as Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter for the Metropolis Daily Planet, arrives out of breath. Hello, Jim. Hi, Mr. Kent. How's Freddy? No change yet. He's still a very sick lad. Oh, gosh. The poor little guy. Look, Jim, did you talk to Inspector Henderson? Uh Uh-huh. I just came from police headquarters. Oh? No news yet about the boot. Oh, I see. Were the interceptor commands alerted? Sure. They've been up in the air ever since noon. Uh Nobody's reported seeing the boot's plane yet, though. Oh, that's bad. He's been gone over 12 hours. He must be well out of the country by now. And how? If only I knew where he was going, I could still get there before he does. You could? Yes, I... How? How? Yeah. Oh, well, I... I... Well, I'd find a way. I can't do a thing until Freddy tells us where this, this device is. Device? What device? Oh, the, uh, whatever it is Sir Hubert Clay created to control the atomic power generated by the sun. Oh. Look, Mr. Kent, hmm? do you think Sir Hubert really did do that? I'm not sure, Jim. But I do think he constructed some sort of monstrous weapon. And so does Robert Archer. And if it's what we think it is, and the boot gets his hands on it, he can easily control the world by threatening to destroy any part of it at a moment's oh, notice. Leaping lizards. I sure hope his, his plane will fall in the ocean or he gets lost or, or something. Well, even that won't help us. Why? What do you mean? Well, before he died, Sir Hubert told Freddy that his device, or whatever it is, was timed to go off on February 1st, 
and cause a great disaster to the entire world. Leaps, that's right. I forgot all about that. What date is it today? January 28th. The 28th? Mm Mm-hmm. Then then in only four more days... Yes, Jim. In only four more days, disaster strikes. Or the boot takes over, and one is as terrible as the other. Oh, gee whiz, what are we going to do? There isn't a thing we can do, Jim. Unless Freddy recovers in time and tells Robert Archer all he knows. All we can do now is wait and hope. And so, through the long hours of the night, Clark Kent, Jimmy Olsen, and Robert Archer keep their vigil, praying that the tiny Freddy will recover. Meanwhile, the boot has arrived in a little alpine village which nestles at the foot of a towering snow-covered mountain near the Swiss border. Tall, heavy-shouldered, hawk-faced, his green ice-like eyes smoldering with anger, the boot stands in the public room of the little inn and glowers down at two men who sit impassively in chairs near the huge red-hot stove as he berates them. You are guides, no? So it is your business to lead anyone who wishes to go to the top of the mountain. Why will you not take me? Why? Answer me, you fools of tongues, have you not? Answer me! Why will you not take me? I offer excellent pay. Why will you not take me? Furiously, the boot screams at the two impassive guides who only shrug and look at their hands, making no reply. Suddenly, the boot breaks off his harangue, reaches for the revolver in his pocket. But he pauses as the inn door opens, and a man enters, stamping the snow from his boots. The man is in his thirties and solidly built. For a moment, he brushes the snow from his short beard. Then, as he approaches the small group at the fire, the boot addresses him. You, you are a guide? Oui, monsieur. I am. Sure. I wish you to take me to the top of the mountain now, at once. Now, monsieur? Yes, right now. These two men have refused to guide me. They are lazy fools. So, why do you wish to climb the mountain, monsieur? Why? Because I like to climb, that is why. Why else do you suppose I came here? I do not know. But it is strange when one who limps as you do wishes to climb a mountain. I can climb as well as you or anyone else. Come now. Take me to the top of the mountain. Do not be a fool, Henri. You be quiet. Henri, is that your name? It is. Well, what are you waiting for? Money? I will pay you well. See, here, look. I will pay you a hundred dollars American money to take me to the top of the mountain. That is much more than you ordinarily receive, no? Oui, it is much more. Then it is a bargain. No, monsieur, it is not. Listen to me, Henri. You must take me to the top of the mountain now, at once. Will you do it for two hundred dollars? No, Henri. Do not do it. Oui, I will take you, monsieur. Ah, good. Good, let us go. Very well, monsieur. I will give you climbing boots and fetch my ropes. Then we will go to the top of the mountain. Come, follow me. Eagerly, the boot follows Henri the guide from the inn. What is at the top of the mountain? And why were the guides so reluctant to take the boot there? We'll be back in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. So keep listening. The way the weather has been acting up all over the country this year has made nearly everyone weather conscious. Also, it's made people do a bit of thinking about the meteorologists or weathermen, as they are better known, those fellows who forecast weather conditions. Folks ask questions like, how do they do it? And often, uh, how often are they right? Well, just in case those things have been bothering you too, let me tell you just a little bit about how they work. From all parts of the United States, reports on local conditions pour into the offices of the United States Weather Bureau. These reports include cloud formations, wind velocities, wind directions, temperatures, humidities, and so forth. From these facts and figures, the weathermen draw other facts. Then they make a certain computation based on similar conditions on other occasions. And from that, they forecast what the weather will be from 12 to 48 hours in advance. But don't expect your local weather forecast to be exactly accurate because sudden changes in conditions miles away from your area can change the entire picture. However, it is a good idea when bad weather is predicted to be prepared for it. It's better that way than to be caught unprepared in a storm. (laughs) 
And now, back to the adventures of Superman. All through the day, toiling with picks and ropes, the boot and Henri the guide have made their tortuous way up the mountain. Now, as darkness closes in and the stars cast a diamond-like brilliance on the snow, Henri lights a torch, then stops. About a hundred yards above him looms the dark, snow-covered peak of the mountain. Why do you stop now, Henri? We are almost at the top. Lead on. No. We go no further, monsieur. But but why? Monsieur, are you not he who is known as the boot? <laughs> what? What did you say? Voila. You are the boot. Your face admits it. What do you know of the boot? I know there is no man so evil as he. A great gentleman told me so. His name was Sir Hubert Clay. Ah, uh, so? Go on. Tell me more. When did he tell you this? Why? Many times, a year ago, I led Sir Hubert to the top of this same mountain. Then it was he told me he labored to bring everlasting peace to the world. When he was here the last time, he said he hoped to return soon and complete his work. But if he failed to return, he said, it would be only if the one called the boot prevented him. I see. So that is why the guides below refuse to lead me up here, eh? We, oui. we recognize you as the boot. We have here our Sir Hubert is murdered, and we believe it is you who did it. So you brought me up here to kill me, eh? No, monsieur. I bring you up here, when no one can help you, to make you confess you have killed Sir Hubert Clay. And I will keep you here till you confess. Then I will take you to Les Gendarmes. <laughs> you are a fool to tell me this, Henri. Because now I must shoot you. No, put that way, that go. Locked in furious embrace on the high snow clad mountain, the boot and Henri the guide grapple for the boot's revolver. Suddenly, twice the gun speaks, its sound reverberating over the lonely wastes of snow. Both men slip to their knees. Then one of them topples slowly over on his back. Which man is it? And what will happen as Superman and his guise of Clark can't thousands of miles away in the Metropolis Hospital? Here's Dr. Mercer say... There is still no change in Freddy's condition, Mr. Kent. We'll know more tomorrow. Tomorrow is January 29th. There are only two days remaining before February 1st when a catastrophe is scheduled to occur. What will happen? There's a thrill a minute in store for you in tomorrow's exciting episode, fellows and girls. So don't miss it, whatever you do. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 12 of Dead Man's Secret on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. This program came from New York. Stay tuned to your mutual station for Captain Midnight, which follows in just a moment. And right after Captain Midnight, you will hear Tom Mix and his Ralston Straight Shooters. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>